Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker Envy tutorial, we're going to continue our JavaScripting for Beginners series. So in this episode, I'm going to cover uh, if, else, and for uh, loops, so conditional branches and loops. So there are multiple ways to do this. The engine handles it uh, quite nicely, but sometimes there's some things that the engine can't do. So we're going to go over some simple ways to, to do... Uh, loops with the for command to input say there's several things that you needed to say but you don't want to have to write out or even event every single uh, possible outcome you can use one for loop to put out many many different things um, and you can use conditional statements in JavaScript to control what the game does so in uh, the previous episode we looked at um, which one was it this one so we did a conditional branch in the game, uh, and basically we handled a switch if switch 1 is on with an else handler. So if it's on, we're going to say switch 1 is on, otherwise switch 1 is off. Um, and then it's going to show you the variable. And this conditional branch here is going to do the same thing for the first part. It's going to say if switch 1 is on, then show the message. Otherwise, say that the message uh, switch 1 is off. So if it's on, it's going to tell us it's on. If it's off, it's going to tell us it's off. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to start off by saying if. And then we're going to put our conditional statement inside a pair of uh, parentheses. So we have our parentheses, parentheses right here con, con, uh, that's saying, controlling uh, what is our condition, our if statement. So dollar sign game capital S on switches dot value, as you know, if you've seen previous episodes, this is saying um, the value of switch number one. Now, when you're saying um, equals, 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 when you put three equal signs, that's telling uh, in a JavaScript, that's saying uh, it's a question, it's a comparison. It's asking, is this value equal to true? So is switch one on? If you were to use like this, it would say it's an invalid comparison uh, operator. Uh, it'll basically say probably undefined. I'm not sure, but you'll get an error. So you use three equal signs inside of your comparison in the conditional branch to check to ask the question is this equal to this so you use three in some programming languages it's just two equal signs in uh, the MV engine it's looking for three equal signs so after uh, you've declared your condition we're gonna uh, write a function basically so um, if this condition is uh, true then do what's inside here um, we're not like actually making a new function we're using a function uh, we're basically saying what's going to happen. So if it's on, if it's true, we're going to do dollar uh, dollar sign game capital M on message dot message dot add in parentheses and in quotations. We're going to write our message. And if you've seen the first episode, I think it was in the first episode, you understand that this is just going to output a message to the screen. Um, on the else handler, we could just go like that and erase the else handler, and it will say nothing if it's if it's off. But if we wanted to tell us that it's off, we're going to write else. So we're going to say, if it's on, tell us it's on. Otherwise, so we're going to close our per, uh, curly bracket right here to say that if it's on, that happens. And then else, we're going to open up a new curly bracket and say, do what's inside these two curly brackets. So dollar game, capital one message, uh, dot add, parentheses, quotations, which one is off. And we're doing our inlines only on the contents message. So you notice that there's no inline right here because we're not actually ending the line. We're starting something. If this is true, then we're going to start doing this. And inside here, we end the line right there. So if it's on, it's going to tell us it's on. If it's off, it's going to tell us off. Real simple. Uh, underneath that, we're going to look at um, how to do a for loop. So a for loop is going to look for three things. It has three arguments. It's going to ask for the value of your, uh, your variable, whatever you want it to call it. Like we can change this to uh, k, and then we would say k greater than... Uh, zero and you notice we're doing an end line inside of this right here because this is saying this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third argument we'd have to change that to K as well but we're gonna just go back with I because I is commonly used inside of for loops so we're saying uh, right off the bat we're declaring a local uh, a temporary variable a local variable we're saying variable X and once again we can change this to whatever we can change that to s it won't really matter what we change that to so we're saying variable x is equal to dollar game capital V on variables dot value of one. So this is saying that our temporary local variable of named x is going to be set to the same number that's stored in the value of our game variables one. That's zero 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 one. We're doing an end line. So that's 
That's just declaring a variable. You've seen that before, I'm sure. So inside the for loop, we're saying that i is going to equal this temporary variable. So whatever uh, value you have in your game variables number one is going to be stored in our in our for loop. It's checking. So i is equal to that value in our first one end line. We're, now we're going to uh, do our um, uh, what is it? The operand, I think, or the operator. Someone will tell me if I'm wrong. This is basically checking what's the condition. So in this condition, we're saying whenever i is more than zero, we want it to do something else. So um, after that, see, this is a loop, and we have to have some way to break the loop. So if we don't put this third one in, or the third one doesn't uh, break the loop somehow, it'll be an endless loop, and we don't want that. So we have to do something to make sure that this condition gets met in this third one. So we know that the value of, uh, of our game variable is going to be positive. Uh, uh, otherwise, this would actually uh, not play at all because it would be uh, less than uh, greater than zero. Yeah, it wouldn't be greater than zero. So it's got to be a positive number. And when it is a positive number, it's going to play the contents, but it's also going to do this. We're going to say i equals minus minus i. And what minus minus i is doing, it's just taking away one from the value of our temporary variable. So if a value, uh, the value of game variables is seven, it's going to play a game message uh, by adding the value. So it's going to tell you seven, but it's still greater than zero. So then it's going to tell you six and it's going to take away one and it's still greater so it's going to tell you five and it's going to take away one tell you four and so on and so on until the value is equal to zero so um, this loop will go uh, this will play a message for every number uh, and it's going to spit out the number we can even add more to this we can go um, if we go like this and use parentheses it's going to say a number so we can say the value of variable one is we're gonna put a space and then we're gonna have to do a plus sign to let the game know that we're adding something else to it so we're putting in a string and then we're putting in a variable a local variable so the message is gonna spit out the value of variable one is bloom whatever it is and then it's going to uh, reduce one and tell you the value of the next one and the next one so this uh, function this uh, for loop right here isn't doing anything super important but it's it's a really really useful mechanic to understand uh, how to use because you can do this to uh, display this make sure that you you're checking for how many party members you have in the party you're checking you can check for like how many uh, items the party has the the length of the name of the character and we're gonna go into dot uh, extension uh, like dot length and and math random we got all kinds of more uh, more things to go over but it's important to understand the for loop and basic conditional branching early on in the tutorial series so let's take a look at this uh, conditional branch and this for loop in the game so if you've watched the previous ones you've seen some of these other events like this event right here is just going to add a bunch of va uh, values to i so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of some of this we're going to basically just go it's going to be itself plus 10 and then add one so it's going to make it go to 11 otherwise it's going to spit out a ton of stuff so when we talk to this one it's going to turn uh make a local variable we've already gone over this and then uh, use it set it to zero whatever the value of the first is then we're gonna add 10 to it and we're gonna add one to it and then it's gonna set the value to the, the game variable so when we talk to this NPC it's gonna make uh, our low our game variable set to 11 uh, and then when we talk to this one it's gonna spit out 11 lines of text and all we did was write these two lines um, and this one right here is going to turn on switch one. This one right here is going to turn off switch one so that we can test the beginning. So let's take a look at this in game. So let's take a, a look at it first. Switch one is off and currently the value of our variable one is zero. So the for loop did nothing. Let's turn on switch one. Now it's going to tell us switch one is on. Let's turn off switch one. Switch one is off. We can turn it on again. Now let's add 11 to our game variable. So switch one is on, the value of the variable one is 11, it's 10, it's nine, it's eight, it's seven, it's six, and so forth all the way down until it's equal to zero or less than zero, but it actually goes to zero and then it stops. So that actually didn't change the value of uh, variable uh, uh, one. 
it just spit out numbers in between it because we didn't actually set. So if we look at this one, we can see that variable 1 is still set to 11. If we wanted this to re actually reduce the value of the first variable, we have to add one more thing inside the for loop, which is very easy to do. So if we wanted to do this, we wouldn't have to write it out a million times or 11 times. We would just go game variables dot value, no, dot set value of 1, and we're going to set it to the value of i. So we're saying after it tells us the, the value of uh, variable 1, we're going to take away, we're um, going to set it to its current value, and we're going to take away 1. So this time, if we add this in here, it's going to actually change the variable each time it goes through the for loop. So whatever our variable is, whenever we talk to this, uh, run this script, talk to this NPC, it's going to spit out all the numbers, and it's also going to be changing the variable to that value. So now, if we look at this one more time, We've set our variable to 11. So our variable is 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now if we check the value of, of, uh, value, value of variable 1, it's set to 1. So why is it set to 1 and not 0? Well, because we set the condition greater than 0. So when it gets down to playing the last time, um, it, it subtracts 1 when it's 2. But then when it's 1, it's still greater than uh, than zero, but it doesn't continue on after that because it's the last time. So it doesn't actually do this last subtraction. So if we wanted it to take it all the way down to zero, we'd have to go negative one. Hopefully this uh, tutorial helps you guys. If you enjoy this tutorial, please like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have a special request you'd like to see, um, especially for scripting and how to do something in JavaScript, um, I'll try to find a simple way to do that. Leave it. Leave your comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being awesome. We will see you in the next episode.